Let's Talk, certain subjects in our FinTech and Cybersecurity Accelerator program, and today's is on cybersecurity. So I would like to welcome um, the folks we have here at the table or at the couch, and that is Martin de Vries. Uh, Martin is from Rabobank. He's an information security officer from the Security Innovation Department. Thank you. We've got Mark Berry. He's a CTO of Westgate, one of the startups in our program. And we have Ori Fragman from ComSec, one of Israel's largest and oldest cybersecurity companies, um, the MD of the Benelux, and Quincy Acklin from Giomo. And he's the CEO of Giomo, also one of the startups that are in our cybersecurity program. So thank you for being here. So um, Martin, I'm gonna start with you and ask you what do you think that's happening in cybersecurity that you find of particular interest? I think there are two sides to that uh, to the question. Um, first is uh, the fact that you will see, let's say, the traditional threats, but they tend to sh shift in a different way. So you have malware that's now not just delivered via email, but packaged as a genuine update of a piece of software. So attackers really spend time and effort in the fact to to disguise them as a, uh, as a genuine update of a product. Um, you'll see DDoS attacks, which we all know a lot, but nowadays uh, IoT is used. Yeah. The other side to the story is uh, for me that there's an increase in the awareness for small medium enterprises on security. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, usually, of course, you'll see large corporates having time, resources to actually spent on uh, protecting against cyber threats. Um, now there is an increased focus also on SMEs and uh, I would consider also startups to be part of that eco ecosystem. Um, so I think that's a good thing because um, let's say from our perspective as a bank, we want to see how we can help also SMEs uh, and, and, and the smaller companies in actually uh, increasing their security. So do you think they have some of the tools that they need, these SMEs? I think it's like also for, for retailers, uh, security is difficult. Um, my mother is not going to configure uh, her router uh -huh. at home uh, or, or doing a VPN. And I think also for, for SMEs and small, uh, small, uh, small companies, uh, they lack the knowledge and and the experience to actually do this themselves. And that is basically a question to, um, to the industry to actually develop easy to use plug and play security tooling uh, that can be just out of the box and actually maybe don't even mention it. Uh, so they want functionality that is secure by design. Yeah, that's something we'll come back to later on yeah. because it's one of my favorite topics, uh, security and, and privacy by design. Do you have anything else to share, Ori? Um, maybe just you know to connect um, to to Martin's uh, point about the new solutions that are looking, and we see kind of a shift in the industry for the past few, uh, say years, uh, lately a lot about the different kind of solutions. For example, about predictive um, security intelligence. So we see a lot now um, capabilities trying to understand and to predict the attacks, whether they are coming from the external or the internal um, resources, and then basically combining all of that data uh, all together to predict an attack. Um, but one cannot now uh, assume that there will not be attack, um, and we know that already. You know now the assumption as, as professionals is, you know, no one is immune, yeah. uh, and, and for that reason exactly, you see also some more uh, interesting approaches to what happens once you are already um, being hacked or being attacked. And one of those interesting ones uh, that we see also in Comsec and we're interesting is uh, as well is a deception approach, where you mm -hmm. actually um, you know the attacker is already there and you try to deceive them. You plan some um, information that is incorrect. You try to um, uh, plan there some resources that are not there, so that they will have waste their efforts, and it will cost them more time, more money usually. Um, if it's even DDoS attacks, for example, um, and therefore you can also on the way understand what are the methodologies and how you can protect yourself uh, better in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go on to ask about some of the challenges that large organizations have in working with both startups and scale-ups in this area. So maybe you could start with that? Yeah, I think, let's say we come from a background a couple of years ago where the bank did everything themselves. We had our own networks, uh, 
we develop our own tooling, uh, we do it everything ourselves, we have our own data centers. Um, more and more, we still develop a lot, uh, but we are, you start using more third parties, of course. Um, cloud movement, um, a lot of tooling is just offered as a service, uh, not usually also of course by big corporates, the Microsofts and the Amazons, and, and uh, usually they have their security also good in our, uh, on, on, on par. Um, but we also see a trend in using more uh, these kind of services, either it's development or hosting services or, or else, from the smaller, uh, smaller companies. And then, let's say, there is a risk increase, as I've just mentioned. Uh, smaller companies usually don't have the time and the effort to actually protect their services um, or, and, and their organizations very well. So now a bank starts using these kind of services for product offering. So actually we are extending our uh, parameter, so to speak, um, and we become, um, um, how do you call it? Uh, vulnerable to their security. Vulnerable to their security. Uh, if, if they don't uh, do it correctly or do it well, then in the end, the clients of the bank are at stake. And I know that um, Comsec has been helping a lot of large corporates to, to deal with these risks and to understand, you know, um, before I work with a startup, I want to know that I'm not going to be compromised because they don't have the right resources in place to make everything rock solid. How do you deal with that? Right, so so even I uh, will take a little bit of a step back also and to connect exactly to that and I think it's what takes us to that step of why their help is needed. Um, uh, and we break it into a few uh, areas that are important and one of them is for example, and this is a saying that always goes with the startups, right? If, if you release your startup when um, you have no bugs and everything is perfect, you have no features that are needed to be added, probably you're already too late, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is probably what exactly the opposite of large organizations or enterprises. We're looking exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. It needs to be bugless and it needs to be with all the solutions in place. We want to make sure that everything is okay so that we have a perfect um, flow from our perspective. So that's one of the things that obviously we see as a challenge. Um, the, the second uh, thing from, um, that we see also um, is that um, startups in general, because they are very business focused and very product focused, they are putting security aside, it's exactly as you said. Um, and that brings us to the same situation where you're expecting a lot of security features, you're expecting it to be robust, at least as your network or at least as your current controls, because you know eventually that this weak spot is enough to create a catastrophe within the organization. But startups are not focusing on those uh, usually, not from architecture perspective, not from the flow itself. Um, and we see that a lot. Uh, not necessarily security startups, by the way, <laughs> but in general. Um, and the third one is also, I would say, is regarding basically user base. You don't have a lot of user base, and what happens in many cases, you see a lot of big organization, organizations asking the questions, and this is the first time that the startup is encountering those. It's the first time that he's, oh, I need to get an answer for that, I'm not sure how, etc. And that takes some time, and sometimes it's not prepared, so it requires a lot of attention. Now what we do, of course, because we have the luxury, let's say, working with a lot of different organizations worldwide uh, in Comtec, large enterprises, small startups, SM, uh, SMEs, etc., SMB, sorry, etc. So um, that enables us to understand in the different geographical locations, in the different even industries, what are the different requirements? What is the gap? What are the anticipation from the large party or from the small party? And in many cases, what we do actually as we sometimes actually act also as, as CISOs or some of those mm -hmm. organizations, is actually to prepare them for that. We are already understanding what is the market that we are aiming for, where it is that we are going to grow, and we prepare the company, not only the product itself, so it will have maybe sometimes it's not only to answer the, um, the requirements for the big organization, it can sometimes actually be from the regulator. Mm -hmm. So we work together on that. On the other side of that coin, we also work a lot with the large organizations. And it happens not once or twice that we'll get a very similar product from different kind of uh, companies and the bigger organization will come to us and say, come say, okay, please check those three, those three, perform a due diligence. It, sometimes it might be because they want to acquire them, sometimes it's because they want to integrate them into their network, into their solutions. And let us know what do you think about the security posture of those. And of course, with us, where we have the business um, focus in mind, we always know how to focus whether we come from the large organization side or the startup 
to focus it specifically to the needs that are required. So I'm going to piggyback on that because I know that Martin, you're sometimes giving workshops to startups and to scale ups of how to take security in mind when you are building products so that they can actually work yeah. with the large corporates. That's something that we want to do as Rabobank is uh, share our knowledge on also specifically this area. Uh, of course, uh, we have the, the, the whole knowledge and, and thing around the, the agricultural business and, and that kind of stuff, but also in this specific space, we want to share our knowledge on uh, with SMEs and in this case also the startups uh, on the various programs that we work with. So we, uh, I, I developed a workshop where we, the based on let's say the proposition of the startup, uh, the channels used, the type of customers, etc., we do basically a lightweight risk assessment on the cybersecurity risks of those startups. Um, and then based on those risks, we can address them and see, okay, in which phase of which you are in now, uh, are these risks valid? So is it currently, uh, is it at this stage a risk or will it or might it become a risk at a later stage? Uh, so that also gives the startup already some notion that uh, there is something in, on the horizon that I need to be aware of, but I don't have to deal with it right now. And then discuss the, the, the mitigating controls that you can take, which can also be accept, of course. Uh, but uh, there might be, um, other mitigating measures that can be taken already to lower those risks for a startup. And to be able to sell it better to people like you because well, the they use, show yeah, you know. The benefit then is that if your investor asks, your que asks you the question of how is it with your security? And basically the only answer that you have is yeah, we have an SSL certificate on our website. <laughs> yeah, then that's not going to cut it. So, and then you have a at least you show also to your investors, etc., that you take it seriously and that you have it on, um, in control. And basically, it gives you yeah, the first step in, in, in a risk management framework. Thank you. So we've got two different startups here with different types of solutions, and they're both helping us to stop the bad guys from infiltrating systems in different ways. Um, Quincy, can you tell me a little bit about how Guillermo does that? Sure, so uh, Gilmo, we utilize just-in-time training, which is uh, a little different than what the rest of uh, the industry does. Uh, typically, um, security awareness companies will provide training once a year or maybe once a quarter for an hour, and generally employees aren't too happy about it. Uh, but um, uh, then they'll use simulated fish to test the employees periodically. But the problem is, with, with solutions like that, is that people don't remember the training, and the training software is nowhere to be found when the real threats come, come through the network. They've inevitably slipped through uh, the best of the filters, and that's what Yilma does differently. When those, when those threats slip through the network and users actually click on malicious links, uh, Guillermo intercepts the link at that point and provides training right at that moment for just a few seconds. And over the course of the year, those few seconds of training add up, but most importantly, um, the output of that training is we're able to crowdsource it and block those uh, malicious websites that, that people are being lured out to. So you're different in two ways, if I understand it correctly. One, it's just in time, and two, you also have some prevention. Right, so we're able to block before the breach occurs instead of just notify companies afterwards. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mark, what about you? Can you tell me a little bit about what Westgate's doing to protect us? So abs absolutely. The, the, the model that we use on the internet today is one where we pivot around a central point of client and server methodology. Uh, this is true for VPNs, it's true for, true for almost every kind of communication. But, so we're interested in moving away from this client and server model where we can and we connect the parties directly so that those communicating parties do not surrender their information to a third party, which represents a risk of loss or theft. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to ask you a specific use case that Martin had mentioned with IoT devices. So, you know, last year we saw that Mariah attack and it took down, I don't know, a lot of the internet uh, in the U.S. around this time, around October time. Um, how can your technology potentially stop these IoT devices from being so vulnerable? Mm. So the Mirai botnet, the attack, it was mounted by compromised IoT devices, uh, mostly cameras actually, uh, 
um, what had happened is that these cameras are deployed out and they are sent with factory default credentials and they sit on the internet and they wait for uh, parties to come and connect to them and log in. And if you can log in, that's it, it's game over. The devices, devices are compromised. So Westgate's technology uh, attempts to level the playing field here and what we actually have found a way to do is to cloak these devices so that they become invisible uh, unless there is a clear intent um, by the correct owners uh, to manage the device. So what you can't see, you can't attack, is, is the premise that we are trying to move towards. So does that mean that you could maybe help some of those manufacturers to get their security to be more security by design, or this is an after-the-fact thing? No, this is, this is absolute, absolutely about security by design. So improving the posture of the devices, the security posture, as they roll off the assembly line. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there other applications of your technology that we haven't touched upon that you'd like us to be aware of? Mm, absolutely. So we, we, we talk about the client-server model, and if we can move away from that to a more peer-to-peer, -peer connected, directly connected model, um, we're able to uh, set up a situation where we can implicitly trust that the connection from both sides is, is expected and warranted. Uh, so we've built an overlay network which is a little bit like a VPN, but it, it enables parties, uh, corporate, corporates, enterprises, SMEs, to present their connections outside of their enterprise in such a way that they don't require a server to always be on to accept their connections. When you have something that's in the center, you pivot around it, it's always on, it represents a threat. Uh, it's, it's vulnerable to attack 24 seven. And if we can change this architecture, if we can change it such that the parties who are connecting connect directly without rotating around the central point, we take away a lot of the inherent risk that comes with having an architecture that's always on, always present, always vulnerable, and always waiting to be attacked. So it's like, if we need to talk to one another, we may need to talk to one another for 20 minutes, we don't always need to be linked. Is Absolutely, and, and, and there's a huge cost that comes with being linked through a central point. When we have entities that move dynamically around the world, uh, from uh, offices, different hotels, uh, different locations, office, office locations, these parties still need to connect. And usually there's, there's a third party somewhere providing the intermediary communication stream that links these two together. So if we can set up a direct conduit between these devices, we, we mitigate a whole bunch of risks that would normally be associated with that type of connection. You might be able to help me with my telephone calls because I'm always so afraid that I'm putting my phone on as the connection instead mm. of doing it with a, another network. Um, Martin, do you see that banks could use some of these types of technologies they're describing? I think, it, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, uh, going to uh, Guillermo, um, it, it's an interesting concept of, of uh, just-in-time uh, training on, on security awareness, so that's definitely something that, uh, that's worth for investigating. Um, and also, let's say for, the, uh, for, for Westgate, it's, it's typically about, yeah, can we define actual use cases uh, which are uh, worthwhile for the bank to further investigate. But let's say the technology underneath is, is, is interesting enough, uh, but then again, uh, what I said way in the beginning, uh, companies or, or also as many users are not interested in the technology, they want, they want the functionality that, that works for them in a secure way. Yeah. Or any other use cases or things you want to add? Yeah, well, I mean, of course, um, if we look at both of the solutions, if we look at Westgate, uh, of course, you know, we're talking here about um, the need that is out there yeah, for us to be able to communicate in a secure way um, even we are even if we were needed to do so um, when it is over a compromised network or a compromised or public uh, uh, network or area um, and that is a basic need that definitely uh, solving that solution uh, solving sorry, that problem uh, is a great achievement um, the second thing of course with, with regards to Guillermo uh, and we see it a lot actually um, from some of the activities that Comsec does as well as part of social engineering. So we do, we do those kind of activities worldwide. It could be sometimes on the physical social engineering. So, you know, we infiltrate to a, an office, to a very sensitive location maybe, and we extract information, etc. Or sometimes it could be on the digital world. 
So it can be by picking up the phone, or it can be sometimes actually by sending phishing emails. And we definitely see that eventually, we always succeed to find that weak spot. There will always be the human factor that is out there. No matter how, no matter how much effort and money we put in, you know, in resources and everything to protect ourselves, eventually it takes only one person to make a mistake. Um, and in order to trick that and to make sure that we are capable of understanding and creating the awareness, such solutions are amazing. And we see how those kind of interactions and training uh, trainings are actually affecting the uh, uh, the companies and creating a better security awareness in an organization. Nice, thank you. So I'm going to focus on the program a little bit now. Um, first, asking actually the startups what you'd like to get out of the program. You know, we're in our first week and we've got another 13 to go. Um, I, I know it's been a, a roller coaster thus far. It will be more as we continue. But what is like the one thing that you really like to get out of the program by the end of it? Um, well, from the Guillermo side, we're at a point where um, connecting with, with other companies um, and, and get, doing a, a proof of concept to prove out the value of what we have, to gather some real data and real feedback um, from, from customers is the absolute most crucial thing, we believe, at this stage. And uh, this program uh, seems incredibly well suited to that. It's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming, all of the customers and interaction we've had, even in the first week and before the program even started. So we're really looking to, to, to uh, um, uh, use that for, for all that we can and, and to engage with as many customers as possible. Well, I, I would echo, echo absolutely what Quincy said, but what's really curious to us, I think, is that as a technology company, uh, we are exquisitely focused on providing what, what really is secure by design, a utility solution that you don't see it's there. Um, and so there's, there's, a bit, there's a, an, an interesting uh, viewpoint for us in engaging with the partners uh, on the program who can help us understand what the larger organizations require beyond the technical solution in order to gain the credibility and the validity to move this into the market. So for us, the, the program, I think it will be invaluable. Thank you. And, and the partners, I'm curious what you'd like to get out of it. Um, I think the, the, the program is, is interesting because it shows uh, insights into, let's say, what's, what's happening. Um, it, it provides an insight in, in, in new security trends, uh, innovations, uh, both also on security but and, and the fintech side. So that, that's the interesting part for us. And yeah, one of the uh, aims that we have as Railbank is also uh, we'll already share, uh, share our knowledge and, and, and give that in some way back to, to, to the community. And also for that, the, this program is excellent. And you also do that some when you're coming with us to places like Israel to scout the different yeah. startups. And that's really useful yeah. or to have calls with them, you know, to yeah. see, does it make sense? Yeah, no, true. So it, it also from that sense, the program uh, provides, uh, um, let's say, uh, it's, it's some sort of a gateway also for me, for us into, uh, let's say, the hotspots on security uh, topics in, in, in the world, like, like Israel, uh, America, and, and, and other places also in Europe. So that's uh, really beneficial. And, uh, First of all, I would have to agree with everything you said. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, we share the same, uh, I would say, goal here. Uh, and also thinking, and I think some few of the other things that also in concept we look uh, at from from the program is obviously the fact that it enables us to, um, you know, bring back something to the society, bring back something to the industry itself of cyber information security, and that is something that we've been looking forward uh, to do for for many years, um, and that is a great opportunity. And of course, as an outcome of it, you know, you can never know. Uh, and we're always looking basically to find those new solutions or new partnerships that we can find as a company that will enable us eventually for our clients and for the people that we work with to provide basically uh, a further uh, uh, complete and uh, uh, solutions and services. Because there's no silver bullet, there's not one thing, but if we can combine trust with trusted parties, good um, technologies, then we can help as things pop up to help to solve them. Um, and something that, that Martin said earlier um, uh, in the discussion, uh, you know, even when, when you're looking for what you can get out of the program, just as you talk to the, the startups about, um, you know, what they need to deliver to, to the large corporate organizations, that's invaluable. So even for security companies, we like to think, 
you know, we're, we're security focused, we're security by design, Absolutely. but we're not even thinking about how that's necessarily going to integrate into the larger environment, right? right. We've done it in, in our environment, but we're looking to, to sell to more. Yeah. And so that feedback and that understanding, as well as what we may have missed, what we weren't thinking of, um, you know, as, as we've got those blinders on, as we, as we transition from just the technical security solution to this entrepreneurial, how do I go out, find customers and sell? It's, it's, it's really important to look back inside. And, uh, and so context really great at helping with that. And the content that we need to focus on to deliver to these large companies is another just amazing benefit that, uh, that we get here, so. Super. Well, I'm going to end this um, by talking about a quote that I got from um, one of the Dutch startups uh, in cybersecurity this morning for 7 o'clock. You've created these platforms and now they're being misused. And you have to do something about it or we will. So that was Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein yesterday, of course, talking about how um, social uh, media was being misused with the elections last year. Um, but, you know, she really could have been talking also about IoT devices being built. So not a platform, but you built these um, devices, be they, uh, if it's a camera, if it's a baby phone, if it's a Barbie doll, if it's a fridge, and, you know, they're not secure, and that's a problem. Um, so at the end of the day, I think that we're going to be seeing more and more resources going to making sure that these platforms, these devices are built with security and privacy uh, by design as, you know, guiding mantras and principles. We've talked a lot about this, that there's more um, room in the industry for companies like HackerOne to, to help test the, the products that are coming out today. So. Um, I think that we're going to see more movement in that area in the future and, well, when we're scouting next year, but let's see what happens. And maybe there are going to be some other things I can't imagine today that we'll be talking about. So thank you guys for sharing your insights and uh, look forward to hearing more as we, as we continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.